All right, this is Psychological Research, Section A Lecture. Our prioritized standards are going to be 2A, 2B, and 2E. Objectively, we're going to distinguish between the steps of the scientific method. Now, the findings of psychology are developed through the scientific method, which is a five-step process for, emp for empirical investigation of a hypothesis under conditions designed to control biases and subjective judgments. Empirical investigation is an approach to research that relies on sensory experience and observation as research data. Through the scientific method, psychologists create theories about human behavior and mental processes. Now, a theory, this is a testable explanation for a set of facts or observations. It's very similar to a hypothesis. A scientific theory is one that is supported by objective evidence developed through scientific research, which is things beyond things like intuition or anecdotal experience. So a scientific theory is actually going to be well beyond any types of just speculation or hunches that you might have. So for intuition, what this term means is Something one knows or considers very likely from instinctive feelings rather than conscious reasoning. Because maybe you've got a bad feeling about this. When we talk about anecdotal experience, this is collected in a casual or informal manner and relying heavily or entirely on personal testimony. So you just have experienced a couple things and based on having experienced a couple things some people feel like well i know exactly what's going to happen uh yeah those are more anecdotes not necessarily a scientific study all right so there are actually going to be five steps of the scientific method developing a testable hypothesis which will be the first one we'll talk about performing a controlled test gathering objective data, analyzing the results, and publishing, criticizing, and replicating the results. Now, the first step of the scientific method is developing a testable hypothesis. And by hypothesis, this is a statement predicting the outcome of a scientific experiment. So a good hypothesis must be stated in a way that is both going to be testable and also potentially falsified, meaning it has to possibly be correct and also possibly be incorrect. Now the term hypothesis just by itself just means like little theory. So again, we're noticing a hypothesis is tied to the scientific method as we're just a theory might not necessarily be tied to a scientific experiment. Now as a part of this step, one must actually give operational definitions which are specific descriptions of concepts involving the conditions of a scientific study. So you're going to have to have the operational definitions of all the terms that are going to be used as a part of your hypothesis. Now, operational definitions are usually stated in terms of how the concepts are to be measured and what operations are being employed to produce them. Now, this step also involves specifying the exact procedures or operations that will be used in setting up the experimental conditions and measuring the results. Now, the second step of the scientific method is performing a controlled test. Now, in a controlled test, there is a variable condition that is known as the independent variable, which is a stimulus condi or condition that the experimenter changes independently of all of the other controlled experimental conditions. So again, the independent variable is always going to involve some type of systematic variation on the conditions that the experimenter is evaluating in an experiment. So potentially, if we had a experiment on the number of words recalled, the independent variable might be our caffeine. Additionally, a controlled test requires a random presentation which is a process by which chance alone determines the order in which the stimulus is presented uh, for who's going to get that independent variable. So it's not like, hey, first 10 people, you're getting the independent variable, next 10, you're not getting it. That would not be random presentation. So if we're talking about that caffeine experiment, uh, you want to randomly select which of your subjects are going to receive the caffeine, the independent variable, 
and uh, randomly determine which subjects are not going to receive the caffeine. Now, the third step of the scientific method is gathering objective data. And by data, these are pieces of information gathered by a researcher through the controlled testing of a hypothesis. Now, the measured outcome of responses, or rather responses, of the subjects of a study is going to be referred to as the dependent variable. So, again, in that experiment that we're talking about, uh, uh, impact of caffeine on number of words recalled, our independent variable, the caffeine, therefore influences, or at least uh, they're probably trying to determine if it influences, the dependent variable, which would be the number of words recalled. So again, this is going to be your data. Now the term dependent variable comes from the assumption that the responses of the participants in an experiment will be dependent upon the independent variable that has been manipulated in the experiment. All right, so this one gives us a couple different examples of uh, an independent variable determining a dependent variable. So potentially a link between smoking and getting lung cancer, the temperature outside and ice cream, age of a car and the value of the car, a uh, number of apples someone picks compared to the number of pies that they can make, the time of the year uh, having an impact on the minutes of daylight, daily sunlight, number of miles you run having an impact on the calories you burn, tickets that are pre sold to a play impacting the money for the decorations, hours spent studying having an impact on the grade earned on a test. So again, an independent variable, uh, if it has been proven to do so, will determine at some level the dependent variable. All right, now the dependent variable must also be given an operational definition where the researcher specifies the procedures or operations used in measuring the responses that are being observed. So like our independent variable, other, you might call that the exposure variable, uh, control variable, explanatory variable, manipulated variable. Dependent variable could also be, also be called an outcome variable, controlled variable, not control, but controlled Explain variable, response variable. These are the terms we're going to be using, but if you hear these other terms, that's talk about the same thing. Now, the fourth step of the scientific method is analyzing the results, which will allow the researcher to either accept or reject the hypothesis. Now, to analyze the results often involves statistical analysis to determine the observed results' level of significance which is going to tell the researcher if the results were likely due to the independent variable or merely due to chance. So anytime you do something, even in a scientific experiment, it is possible that it might have just been a fluke. It might have just been chance. So you're looking to try to make sure that there's a high probability that it wasn't just a fluke and it wasn't just chance. So for the results to be considered statistically significant, uh, there has to be a probability that the results are due to chance is going to be less than 5%. So there has to be less than a 5 in 100 chance that the results were, or less than a 5 in 100 chance that the results were a fluke, and otherwise a 95% chance that it was truly because of the independent variable. So these outer areas are going to theoretically represent the 5% chance that eh, things just happen. Now, the fifth step of the scientific method is publishing, criticizing, and replicating the results. Now, the results must be communicated through publication or other type of presentation to the scientific community to determine if the findings will hold up to criticism and replication. Replicating results involves repeating an experiment to see if the same results are going to be obtained if you did it again. Now, to control for bias when they replicate, it's going to be done by a completely different researcher. It's not going to be done by the same researcher again. Uh, oftentimes, this is going to be done using slightly different control conditions to try to make sure that uh, 
if you change one thing slightly, you'll still get the same results. Now, criticism or replication is a screening process used to filter out poorly conceived and executed research. Uh, the majority of research studies actually fail to make it out of the criticism or replication stage and therefore be published as a peer-reviewed study. So lots of things go through the scientific method. Very few make it completely out unscathed. All right, that was Psychological Research, Section A Lecture. Our prioritized standards were 2A, B, and E. And objectively, now you can distinguish between the steps of the scientific method.